Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland. I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. In today's episode, I will talk about role level security. So what are you going to find in this video? A general overview of role level security? Explaining why it is a great feature, especially for Excel report creators. Creating roles in Power BI desktop. After then, testing these roles in desktop. Covering what to do after the report is published. Validating that all security settings are working fine. And lastly, some limitations to keep in mind. Wow, quite an action-packed agenda for today. But before we cover all of these, a quick word from today's video sponsor the like and the subscribe button. If you like what you see, please consider clicking on both to help others finding the channel and learn more about Power BI. All right, what is role level security? It is a security settings in Power BI that allows report creators to manage access to the Power BI database and the report itself. Think about it as a predefined slicer or filter that restricts users from accessing information not relevant to them or information that should not be available for them. These filters can be defined based on any field you have in your model, meaning whatever business logic or data restriction you would like to implement, Power BI's RLS is going to allow you to do that. It probably sounds a bit dry, but once you see it in action, I can guarantee that your mind will be blown. What happens with Excel reports if we want to create some sort of a security settings? Most of the time, what I've seen is that report creators manually split Excel reports into smaller Excel reports to accommodate security profiles. This is time consuming and suboptimal. But with Power BI RLS rules, we can have a master report and limit access to the data using security profiles. Just a quick note here. I have also seen business users coming from Excel to Power BI, creating multiple reports or report pages based on responsibility, effectively replicating what they used to do in Excel. If you have done that before, stay till the end to learn how to decrease your report maintenance workload. With these two points covered, it's time to head over to Power BI Desktop and start defining roles and rules. Here we are in Bilingual Analytics Standard Report. On the Sales Report page, you can see we sell different product groups, such as electronics, computers, and so on. In most cases, those colleagues who are only responsible for a certain product group should not be able to see details from other categories. It can be seen as a standard security practice followed by the company, but in my view, it's also important to help to reduce the noise in reporting. If a user is not responsible for a certain product, why would we surface that information for them? Let me know in the comments below if you think differently. In Bilingual Analytics, we have Fran, Sri and Ted who are responsible for electronics, computers and automotive products respectively. Let's start by setting up their dedicated roles for this report. On the ribbon under modeling, there is the security settings. Let's choose Manage Role first to create the roles we need. Click on Create and name the first role as Electronics. It's always a good idea to give meaningful names to these roles. As I mentioned before, we can define rules based on any fields we have in the model. For this role, I need to grab the group field from my products table. Click on the three dots next to the products table, add filter and click on group. Replace value to electronics, click on the tick to validate the decks and our first role is ready. Allow me to quickly set up the other two roles. With all three roles created, let's click on save. But before we publish the report to the service, make sure that we have created the right security profiles. Under modeling, security settings, click on view as. Here we have our newly created roles. Select electronics and click on OK. And look at that, the report is now filtered down to electronics and electronics only. More importantly, if I click on my slicer panel, under the products slicer, only electronics is available meaning that I don't have to worry about people accessing information that they are not supposed to access. Cool stuff. Just a quick recap before we head over to the published report. So role level security helps us, report creators, to secure reports. Not only that, but it also allows report users to find those business critical insights easier and quicker. Setting up roles in Power BI to suit the business logic is straightforward, and we can set up multiple roles within Power BI Desktop. But how does Power BI know which user should be linked to which profile? Now that is something we can build in the service. 
So let's head over to our published report. I am now in the workspace where I have my dataset and report published. Because role level security is applied to the data model, I need to click on the three dots next to the dataset and click on security. This is where we can find those profiles that we just created in Power BI Desktop. Allow me to assign the three colleagues to these profiles really quickly. And with that step, we are done. But before we go around the office and tell everyone that their security profiles are done, one more validation, just to be safe. Select the profile and click on the three dots next to that. Then test this role. And voila! We are looking at the report, pretending to be a person within this security group. Seems to be working fine for me. But how can we handle users who should have access to the whole report? Like Bill, Bilingual Analytics CEO. Great question. Let's talk about that one. We have two options to manage roles or users who are responsible for everything. One method is to assign them to every single role. Now in this demo, it wouldn't be too difficult, but imagine if you have 10 roles and multiple users. It would be a nightmare to create and manage all of that. So what I usually like to do is to create a role called all with no restriction or filter whatsoever. With that new role added in desktop, I can set up security profiles to senior management more easily. While in this demo I only used a single field from the product table, you can apply as many rules as you want under a certain profile. Just have a quick look at this one. This role will only show records for products sold online, from the computers group to customers in APAC, applying three DAX expression to pre-filter the data for those who fall into this profile. As long as you have a field in the data model, which should be used as the basis of security profiles, you are good to go. Before you start implementing RLS within your Power BI report, let me flag a couple of limitations, or I should rather say, things to keep in mind. With RLS, we can limit the data or records user can see and access, but cannot limit access to the workspace or within the workspace itself. So even if a user doesn't have any roles defined in the report, they will see the report itself, but once they open it, no results will be shown. Something similar to what you see on the side next to me right now. While I added individual users, I would strongly encourage you to add groups. It's a better way of managing access, especially if you have hundreds or thousands of users accessing the same report. But not all groups are created equally, which means that Office 365 groups cannot be added. If you are unsure about this bit, just check with your IT department. I reckon they will be helpful to find the best group to be used or create a dedicated one for this reason. It is also important to remember how you shared your report with others. If you are using direct access, permission levels do not matter, in a sense that users will only see data available for their roles. Even if they have build access or use Analyze in Excel, RLS will flow through and apply to them. However, if you share the workspace, RLS only applies to those in the viewer category, even if they have built permissions. It could be tricky to figure out what is the best option for sharing and collaboration, so if you want to read more about this topic, you can find a link to the official workspace roles documentation from Microsoft. I also plan to record a video on report and dataset sharing in the near future, so stay tuned for that. And I haven't even started to talk about apps and their security setting, which is a whole other kettle of fish. Generally speaking, role level security is a super powerful feature, something that I use in every single report that I create in my day job. It makes the whole authoring experience a million times faster, limits the number of times I have to double check that the right people have the right access, and most importantly, as it is all about security, it guarantees information protection for the whole organization. Are you using RLS in your reports? Would you consider implementing them? Let me know all of that in the comment section below, along with any other questions that you have about role level security. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting today and you will be able to implement this for your reports. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button before you leave or before you watch one of the videos above. Until the next one, see ya!